Dan Kennedy talked about how barter was the underground economy. Now, I always I kept saying that to John on the air, and he's like, a parallel universe. <laughs> and I kept saying, underground economy. It just sounds sexier to me. But the, the truth is, I mean, barter's been around for a long time. Art of barter's been around since 1991. But it sort of stayed in the underground. And it, it, it sort of comes back in, a, in vogue, similar to how the gold people all popped up now again. And, and barter's becoming in vogue again, because there are many folks that have you know, uh, that, 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 that would rather try to save the cash dollar and spend a trade or a barter dollar. They could barter their services rather than spend actual cash. So when I saw that in the newsletter, I said, I, I happen to know somebody that was a member of Art of Barter, and I said, I want to, you know, will you introduce me to him because I'm bringing him on the show. So uh, that's how we brought on John, and I said, I, I, John, I want you to come out here and, and teach us because he told me, you know, barter is like the most powerful marketing tool he's actually ever seen. So I said, I want to learn all about it. So I want you guys to help me welcome, put your hands together, and welcome Mr. John Hora. Thank you, sir. Welcome, John. It's all yours. Is this thing working? Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, boy, it's nice to see such a big turnout. It's nice to see so many of my members here. Thanks for coming. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> um, I own a company called The Art of Barter, and as, as Mark said, uh, we've been doing this since 91. And I'm going to start out giving you a thumbnail sketch about our industry. We're one of hundreds of similar groups around the country. We have a membership of small business owners, like everybody in this room. And it's nice to be in a room with like-minded people. There's nobody knows what business is like on our side of the cash register other than another business owner. You know, so we can cut right to the quick. We all understand how tough it is to make payroll and you know, keep everything running. And barter's a great way. There's some secrets here I'm gonna tell you about that can help you with that. Well, the thumbnail sketch. We've got an organization of business owners. They buy and sell from each other. Except instead of using a cash dollar, they use what we call a barter dollar. Well, you think, okay, so what's, what's the benefit of that? Well, they get business they wouldn't have had otherwise. And they spend the barter dollar and keep the cash dollars in their pocket. When I first heard about this 20-some years ago, the art of barter was a division of a bigger company in the fine art publishing business called Circle Galleries. They used to do a lot of barter. They were had art galleries in major tourist cities. They published the limited edition signed graphics of museum collected artists, and they would trade two or three million dollars a year of art instead of using cash. And they were the publishers. They, it was just ink on paper. It could trade a few pieces of paper that were worth a few thousand dollars and get that copy machine instead of having to write a check for it. So they put together the art of barter, but they didn't know what to do beyond that. They didn't know how to sell art, they didn't know how to sell barter. Not that I knew how to sell barter, but I'm a marketing guy. I used to own an agency, and I've done a lot of stuff with the Fortune 500, Fortune 100, as well as startups and small business people. So I, I, I knew the mindset of a business owner, and I knew how to uh, communicate with them. So we put this, the, the company together, and Ron, who's my business partner, he's the guy that ran all the trades for Circle Galleries. He, he gave me some certificates for a pizza restaurant in West Chicago. Now, I was living in Bloomingdale at the time. My kids are little. I thought, let's try, this. let's try this out. So we drive from Bloomingdale to West Chicago, which is maybe 20 minutes, buy a couple of perfectly good pizzas, gave the guy the certificates, I drove back home with the pizzas, still had the cash in my pocket, two really good pizzas, and it dawned on me I had passed 20 other pizza restaurants right in my neighborhood. But I was willing and eager to drive all the way over to Warrenville because I saved 50 bucks. That's where I got the idea this is the most powerful marketing plan that I've ever seen. We provide three functions. We're a bank. We hold all the barter dollars. We're the accounting service. We send out monthly statements like you get from a credit card or from your bank. And we're your advertising agency. 
we promote the services of the other members to the other members. Our goal is to put the buyers and sellers together and let them do business. We clear the transactions, their barter dollars are exchanged between the accounts. We keep everybody compliant with the IRS. You hear about the underground economy, that's why I kind of cringe. So it's not really underground, it's totally legitimate. There, years ago, I'm going to say, I guess it was in the late 70s, but prior to that, the industry as it existed at the time, they're doing millions of dollars of business and the IRS comes knocking and goes, hey, we, you know, we want our thing. And they go, what business? We're not doing any business. <laughs> it's all under the table. Well, what you'd think, yeah, I could see an advantage if you can skate on the taxes. However, what the IRS did by legitimizing the industry, there's a barter line on the tax form now. So we're, we're above ground, but it's kind of a secret because it's only business owners that, that, that deal with it. We're not here to compete with anybody's cash business. We're here to add a layer on top of something sweet, something extra. So we, to put the word out there too much, we were on the risk of, of an imbalance where somebody's cash flow is going to be negatively affected. Now your cash flow has got to stay there. It's got to, that's what pays your bills. That's what pays my fees. And you got to keep the wolf away from the door. Or you're not going to be any good to me or my clients for that matter. So the barter is a special thing that's on top of that. Now imagine, I, Mark, remember the, we used the example of a client of mine who recently bought some billboard advertising. Yep. Uh, it was a $40,000 uh, ad thing. And we've known this client for a while. He's got a good history with us. We have no problem selling uh, his services and things. I fronted him the 40 grand. He gave me $40,000 of certificates for his establishment. He took the 40,000 in bar dollars, paid the billboard company. Now try doing that with a bank. Now if you go to the bank and you want to borrow 40 grand, all right, okay, fill this out, fill that out, fill this, you know, fingerprints, see, uh, the FBI report on you, and it's intimidating, and it's and you're tying up your equity, and you're nervous. You might not get the loan. You get the loan. Okay, you got forty thousand dollars. You go buy the the advertising with it. Okay, now you got to pay the bank back. How are you gonna do that? You come to me. You know it's not. You get the forty k. I'm tightened up with the certificates in the case. That's one of the mechanisms we can use as a certificate. But that is an amazingly powerful transaction that happens right there. We do this all day long. Uh, our client base is Chicagoland. Uh, we've got clients from the Indiana border up to the Wisconsin border, from the lakefront out to Elgin where our offices are and everywhere in between. It's mostly people that provide a service as opposed to mercantile goods. People trade what they otherwise would have had to have eaten. I'll give you one of the perfect examples. We work with a number of ticket brokers. Now, a ticket broker, that's a speculative business. He buys X number of tickets for X game or concert, hoping that it's going to sell out so he's got something valuable. Now, if he buys them for face, or they buy them a little bit less than face, he buys, let's say, 100 of these tickets. Well, he's selling them at a premium. So if he sells half of those tickets, he probably could have doubled his money. So what's he going to do with the other half that he didn't sell? He's already made his money, but he still has 50 tickets. We signed up a ticket broker once, and the salesperson who went to see him says, John, this guy shows me a closet behind his desk. He opens it up and stacked floor to ceiling with unsold tickets that he ate, and he was making money hand over fist. Well, if he had known about me sooner, that closet would have been empty, and he would have had a whole pile of barter dollars. He's taken something that expires, highly perishable, and he's converting it to a barter credit that does not expire, that he can use for all kinds of other stuff later down the road. A business that has a fixed cost, like, like this place, the hotel, whether this place is full or not, they still got the same nut to crack. Most hotels in Chicagoland annualize their occupancies around 70%. That means 30% of those rooms are unsold. They're foolish not to be trading those. If I gave the guy a bale of hay for an empty room, he'd be up. If you give him a barter credit that he can use to have the parking lot seal coated, 
or have the HVAC work done or a bunch of printing done or buy billboards or whatever else he needs, you know? It's more for people that provide the service. See, that's the perishable thing. Merchandise is traded. It's the exception. We trade phone systems and copiers and trade cars and jewelry and art and tchotchkes and stuff, but that's the exception. The most, it's a lot of contractors, um, other professional services. Healthcare's a big one. I was on PBS uh, recently. They were fascinated about the barter phenomenon within the healthcare industry now. And that's one thing with a lot of dentists. We've got a lot of uh, chiropractors, eye doctors, uh, and then all the other professional services like, you know, salons and massage therapists. Now, I think about it. Before I was in the art of barter, I don't think I ever would have paid money for a massage. If I couldn't talk my wife into doing it, I wasn't getting a massage. I wasn't going to go spend $100 cash for a massage. Well, now that I've got some barter dollars, I can get a massage every week. And people do. They, it's a feel-good thing. You can do things that you otherwise wouldn't budget it for. It would be nice. Well, it would be nice to have a nice piece of art. Nobody's popping from pieces of art in this, this economy right now. But with barter, yeah, we can have a nice art. We can take a nice vacation. We can, you know, go see the dentist a little more often, get the teeth cleaned, you know, get another pair of glasses, get the car fixed finally. We've got a lot of mechanics that trade with us. The way our system works is we make money when people spend a barter dollar. We're transaction fee based. It's ten percent of whatever anybody spends. So it's incumbent upon me to bring you business so you have barter dollars in your account and then provide trading partners where you can spend those barter dollars so my cash register rates. You spend $100, I send you a bill for 10 bucks. I think it's time for me to get paid. We've done our job. We brought you business you wouldn't have had and provided the, the value when you spent the, the money, and that, that's, that's when we get paid. Um, there, there's an opportunity we're, we're growing. I mean, the barter world is way different from the cash world. It's almost like a mirror image. People say, what do you do for advertising? No, we don't advertise. What? Well, the, we're, if we're going to put a bill, I, I, there was years ago, there was a, one of our competitors that's no longer in business. They had a huge billboard on the highway about what they do. And I'm thinking, 99% of the people will go and buy that billboard have no interest in it, they don't own a business, and it's not going to apply. You know, they're broadcasting to a very, very narrow market. Well, I've been on TV a lot on the news talking about the art of barter, and the people will say, oh, John, your phone must ring off the hook the next day. No, never happens. Barter is sold, it's not bought. I'm not here to try to sell you on this. It appeals to only certain kinds of industries and only certain kinds of people. You know, we all learn to do business in the cash world. And it's, you know, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. There's nothing wrong with money. It's the love of money that's, that's the root of all evil. Money is how we transact things. Barter, the organized barter system is different from most people's experience. When I was a kid, I have two younger sisters. And when we were little, all the good stuff came in six. There were six Eskimo pies in a box, you know, six orange crushes in a case, right? Three kids, that's two apiece. Well, if I've had my two Eskimo pies and I want another one, I trade my sister one of my orange crushes for her Eskimo pie. So I guess I've been doing this for a long time. That's a direct trade. You don't need me to do that. You can, you know, you find, uh, if you're a mechanic and you need your teeth fixed, you find a dentist whose car is broken, and, and you can do it if you can figure out the numbers. The dentist charges $150 an hour, and you're charging $40 an hour. Well, Doc, you only worked in my teeth for an hour. I worked in your car for five hours. I don't think that's fair. You never can even up on those deals. But with the barter system, the, the, <laughs> the mechanic with the bad teeth can fix the car for the florist, and he can earn the barter dollars that he can go to the dentist with and get his teeth fixed. It's a negotiable currency. It's like cash. 
It's just in a little microcosm, a little local universe. It's all voluntary. The sale is made at the discretion of the seller. We don't want to interfere with anybody.